We have more Ghanaian students arriving from Poland this time around. Now, a few days back, uh, we actually saw some 17 Ghanaians arriving. Now, back uh, in the background, you have uh, close to, uh, you know, almost about 24 students who are arriving today via Qatar Airlines. Now, they are coming uh, from Poland, uh, like I mentioned, one of the first countries to actually receive uh, persons escaping the war in Ukraine. Now, in a short, they will soon be trickling in uh, to be received by a delegation uh, from the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. Now, there you have them coming in. Their numbers, young men and women, arriving safely from Poland this time around into Ghana. Now the Ministry of Foreign Affairs insisted that all steps have been taken to ensure that Ghanaians who are ready to fly in are allowed to fly in. I see a smile. You see her beaming with a smile. After lobbying the uh, Russian authorities and the president, using various avenues through the EU and the AU, uh, the President Putin has finally come out to say that they are going to open a safe passage for our students and uh, citizens who are caught up in Sumi, Kharkiv and the other areas. And that is going to start immediately. The other good news that we are also hearing, which maybe some of you might be interested, is that the government of Hungary has agreed to take those of you who will be prepared to transfer to universities or to continue your education in Hungary. And they are prepared to match whatever facilities, whatever uh, financial assistance or financial fees that you were paid in Hungary. So there's a window of opportunity and a window of hope that all is not lost. We have also made arrangements with the Ghana Psychological uh, 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 Society. Having gone through some of these things, maybe you might need some counseling or some advice or some direction. So we have the society here with us. They will give you some small information. And then if in the coming days you will need that kind of assistance, you can contact them and they will be able to uh, counsel you as you in reintegrate back into your various source. Our compatriots who've managed to cross over to some of these neighboring countries have decided not to come home. We can't force them. It's their choice. Coming home or evacuation is a voluntary exercise. So if you don't want to come, nobody can force you. To the extent that even there were some that we have bought tickets who were supposed to travel tomorrow majority of them have decided against coming. Do we know why so it has become a cost to government, right? It's about 18. Do we know why? I have, well, some of the reasons that we know of is one. Some have decided to take advantage to go to some of the EU countries. Somewhere along the line, it came out that uh, because of e levy, government says there's no money or the evacuation exercise is being tied up to the, the yield levy. That is never true. The yield levy has not been passed, but I can go on record and tell you government has released money, first tranche of money that has been released to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to undertake this evacuation exercise is two million US dollars. That is the first tranche. So we are on course. Yield levy or no yield levy, Akufuadu has released money. And we are on course. expect the, the president to release more. There's more. That's why I said the first tranche. What was going on on the borders wasn't easy. We had to reach there at 3 a.m. And trust me, you can't even have st somewhere to step. People are lying down on the floor. People are dead. Like, people are frustrated. We just woke up one day to hearing that they've started, like, bombing everywhere. And I was so emotional. I called my parents. I don't want to do this again. It's very dangerous. So it's by God's grace we reached here. And that's why we appreciate whatever they are doing. It's really, really traumatic. You can't, we just went there for our education. Six years of medicine, Corona came in, and now there is a war. 
we are thinking about how to move forward and everything is bringing us back. So this time around, like, I'm really, really happy the government stepped in to do something for us in this very difficult time. Now, after being addressed by the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Ampetrum Sapon, uh, the students are now going through the processes at the airports to exit the facility. Now, just like the first uh, day or the first batch, Happy relatives, happy parents uh, who are more than excited to see their, their kids back in the country, alive and well, even though traumatized. Now this gentleman uh, in your shot, his uh, family members are also excited. You can see waving of handkerchiefs, singing of songs, very, very excited to have him back. So that's a... Uh, a relative uh, hugging uh, one of the students who just returned from Ukraine. Like the scenes we saw the last time. It is a sigh of relief to actually have some of the, some of the students back. Smiling faces, smiling parents, happy to welcome them back to Ghana. Some haven't walked for hours. Most of us walked for five days, no food, no water, and it was also um, snowing. So you just can imagine how um, traumatized it will be. It was not easy for us, and seeing most of your friends dying in front of you, you can't help them. Some of them were collapsing. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't even do anything, because you need to help yourself, because you are also weak. So you can't help someone who is also weak. So it's very traumatized. And you saw your friends dying, I mean like Ghanaians or other foreigners? Other foreigners dying. Other foreigners dying, yeah. You I saw see any Ghanaian? For me, I didn't see any Ghanaians, but just I saw that if um, they were posting it on um, WhatsApp that most of the Ghanaians were missing. And up to now, some of them were not able to find. So we are just praying for the best. Wow, wow. So you work for five days. I mean, talk to me about that. I mean, when did you start? What exactly did you okay. do? We, I started, we started on Friday because, you know, my, my hostel to, is close to the airport that yeah. was being blasted. So we, I finally had the shock, like, you know, the explosion. You know, you heard I had it because it was around 5 a.m. and I was not asleep. I was I was on my project work, so I was I was on I was awake. The beach city again. Ivano Frankish. So on Friday then we planned that okay we need to go to Poland um, border to um, to cross the border to uh, Poland. But when we were going, you know, it was we thought it was some few hours, but it took us days to just cross that border. It took us days, like four days, five days. Yeah. Was it? Were you in the car? Or were you walking? We were walking. We, st we started um, we were walking around 12 uh, p.m. Yeah. 12 p.m. on Friday. Yeah. And we got to one checkpoint that they said the Ukrainian checkpoint. Mm -hmm. And they hold us there for like three days. We don't have anywhere to sleep, no shelter, nothing. No food, no water. And it was also snowing. So we were there and you can see people passing out and calling for help, calling for um, ambulance to come through and things, yeah. You know, they didn't allow us to go through, so we need to get ourselves, uh, as boys, you know, because we have girls around, so we need to get ourselves as boys, and we fought the migration, yeah, I, we fought the migration that they were using, yeah, we fought them, some of them were using um, their, their, gun, their bang of the gun, you know, to be uh, eating us, and some of them were chasing us with cars, but we fought with them and we were able to escape, you know, to break through for other people to follow. Wow, wow. Were you yourself hit by any of the guns or anything? Um, I was not hit by the gun, but I was able to, you know, push some of the migrations away because, you know, when when there are this, when you have this anger in you, right, you can uh, do anything that you don't even think of. So we were able to push them. I have my, some of my friends that were being knocked by a car by the Ukrainians. Are you serious? Yeah. Where are they now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know their whereabouts from now. Yeah, because we are all running for our life, so I don't know their whereabouts. So you basically escaped after three days of not eating, no eating no no. running away, did you run alone or? I was, no, I was walking, I was running with my friends, my Ghana, Ghanaian friends. And God has been so good. Most of us are, most of us landed today. Some, some to land on, on Sunday, yeah. But some, but some can be found? Some can be found. Some were, uh, you know, some need to return, you know, get a train to other um, border, maybe Romania or Hungary, yeah. In all, in all of this, what was going through your mind? I mean, what was going through your mind? Are you, am I going to survive? What is that? I was just, just praying. I don't know what was going to my mind. I was just praying. Yeah, because seeing my friend going off, because most of them are stronger than me. But yeah. some of them just collapsed in front of me. I was like, wow. That means I'm also a strong guy. Sorry, man. Sorry.
So you finally made it to the Polish border? Yeah, we finally made it to the Polish border. Yeah. And then was the crossing easy? Uh, okay, uh, for the Polish border it was easy. Because mm. I can see the Ukrainians were the one, you know, holding the uh, uh, foreigners. Mm. They were holding the foreigners. Let's say that the Ukrainians were the one holding the foreigners. But uh, I got to the, Poli uh, the Polish border, that was on Monday. Mm. And that same Monday I was able to cross. But when you, let, let me ask you, if I was, um, I was supposed to get to the Ukraine border on Monday, it would be like maybe Wednesday before I'd be able to cross or Tuesday. Why were they preventing you from? They said they want their citizens to cross first.